Hello and welcome to CX Today. I'm Sandra Lovachki and today I'm joined by AC Evans, co-founder and CEO of Trips. How are you doing today, AC? Hey, great, Sandra. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here as well. Today we're going to discuss conversational outreach, tips for engaging with customers in a meaningful way, and how to make the most out of messaging. So to start things off, uh, could you please tell us uh, what really is conversational outreach? Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I think most simply put, conversational outreach is how would you reach out to a friend, right? Like friends don't call friends 27 times in three days. Uh, friends don't leave friends voicemails, or at least not many of them. Uh, what they do is they converse generally over text messaging. And then if there's uh, a reason to get on the phone, then they would essentially kind of asynchronously schedule a call, right? You'd be like, hey, you free later? Yeah, call me at five. All right, I'll call you back. I'm on the other line. They, so that's really how we think of conversational outreach is, is an automated way to allow big companies to look more human when they're reaching out to their audiences. Yeah, so um, I guess uh, the big problem for, for enterprises is to keep customers engaged. As you mentioned, they're not our friends, so they're uh, a bit difficult to uh, keep engaged. So uh, how can companies drive engagement with uh, conversational outreach strategy? Well, there's a, a few different things they can do. I mean, I, I think texting is the most ubiquitous channel right now. Uh, it's the preferred channel uh, by, by many, even seniors we're seeing now are texting. Um, so doing any sort of texting is a start, right? I, I look at text messaging in a few different cohorts. There is uh, push messaging, which is, you know, traditionally you'd get a, a, a text from, you know, uh, CVS or Walgreens letting you know a prescription is ready to pick up uh, or your gate changed with Delta or United. One way, things like that, you know, coupon delivery uh, for, you know, Chipotle for a free side of guac, that kind of thing. Um, then there is blast messaging, which is, you know, if you're a mortgage company kind of uploading a list and pushing out a, a large uh, campaign to a bunch of people, again, generally one way in nature, uh, not two way, not conversational. Then you have chat bots, which uh, many SMBs, small, medium businesses, leverage those uh, and leverage them pretty well. You think of uh, dentists, hair salons, restaurants, sometimes uh, scheduling simple appointments, you know, respond R to reschedule, C to confirm, that kind of thing. Uh, then you have two way, I would call it agent enablement. So this is if you're a healthcare company or mortgage company and you're allowing your uh, your nurses or your agents to text their audiences. Uh, it's essentially what we would do, but there's there's user interfaces for that now that you can do online. So you can hold many conversations at once. Again, this is just kind of making a, a call center agent uh, or a loan officer a little more efficient. Uh, and then you have what we do, which is, again, what we call conversational outreach, uh, which is meant to be more cognitive in nature. It's meant to look a lot like that two-way agent enablement piece, but by use of artificial intelligence and not by use of uh, humans, because that's a it's an expensive thing to scale the two-way. Uh, it's also, uh, there's, there's a lot of compliance risks. There's a lot of quality assurance risks. You don't have controls or what people do and don't say over this channel. And it's a highly regulated channel as well. So you got to be really careful. Right. And you mentioned uh, human to human like interaction. So what are some tips for companies to engage with customers in a me more meaningful way? Yeah, it's, it's all about how you say it, right? Like what is the what are the messages you're sending out? Are they contextually relevant? Are they conversational in nature? Are you asking questions or are you making statements? Uh, we find that the more human you can be and the more empathetic that you can be, uh, the better. So uh, with Drips, we we operate in many different industries, but it's it's really important to know, you know, if uh, if somebody is a, a, a member or a user or a policyholder or a claims person. So you got to have a lot of context about why you're reaching out to the user, who they are, what their experience has been thus far, their consumer experience, and then ultimately, where do you want them to go, right? Uh, you can't hammer them over the head with a bunch of 
uh, text messages, sending links saying, click here, click here, click here. Uh, what you need to do instead is say, hey, Sandra, we're following up about the quote that you requested. Did you have any questions? And then if you have questions, great. You need a system that can answer those. Uh, if they uh, they don't say anything, you need to persist a little bit. Hey, Sandra, just following up again. You know, I'll check back in next week unless you unless you want to talk sooner. So we call it kind of polite persistence. Um, so the best thing you can do is be more human, right? Use Sandra's name. Make sure that there is context uh, in the creative itself. You know, why are you reaching out on what for what reason? Make sure there's recency involved. You know, I'm reaching out to you because you recently uh, requested, you know, a plumber on Home Advisor or whatever it is. Uh, were you still interested? That kind of thing. So it's it's all about the creative, the context, uh, the cadence. You know, how often you're reaching out. And again, the more you can design these flows to be how they would be if a human was doing it, the the better, more human responses you'll get. Yeah. Great stuff. And finally, uh, since Drips is all about texting and messaging, uh, how can companies make the most out of uh, a text message? I think to start, just do it. You know, even if you're just sending, uh, a, we call it a primer message. So most companies have call centers. Uh, most companies have customer support ser uh, centers. Even if you just send a single text message saying, hey, Sandra, uh, this is, you know, insurance company, you know, A, uh, we're going to call you shortly to talk about your account. Even if just just doing that one text message and then you follow it up with a call will double your answer rates. You know, people don't answer calls that they don't know who they are anymore. Texting is a really good way to insert uh, authority and priming and uh, relevancy so that the person knows, you know, why you're calling and who's calling. Uh, the where you get into what we do, uh, if, if you're leveraging AI, you need to be able to handle the responses because what's invariably going to happen is the users are going to say, well, I can't right now. I'm at work. Right. And if you don't handle that inbound response, you've now created a poor user experience. So you would want to know that the person said they're they're in the office or they're at work. You'd want to respond in kind. You know, uh, sorry, we caught you at work. We can try you at six. We're open till eight. What works best for you? Question mark. So Again, just starting with, you know, either the push or the, the primer or the, the transactional messaging is great. You'll see immediate lift, but invariably you're going to want to get to this very humanized approach, whether you're using humans or you're using artificial intelligence. Right. I completely agree that texting is the way to go in this day and age. Okay. Thank you so much, AC. I learned a lot and thanks for joining me. Yeah. Thanks for the time, Sandra. I guess that's it for today. If you enjoyed our conversation, feel free to like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.